So let's start by talking about why everyone's talking about big data. What's the big deal about MapReduce and Hadoop? What, uh, what sorts of problems do these help us solve? So here's some examples that we'll talk about of how big data analysis has changed the world. All right, let's get started. So welcome to my introductory course to MapReduce and Hadoop and other related technologies. Let's dive right in, answer the big question you want to know. What is MapReduce? Well, MapReduce is just a programming model for processing large data sets. So it's an API, if you will, sort of an algorithm or a, a way of breaking up data sets and processing them in a distributed manner. The key thing about MapReduce is that it offers a way to horizontally scale data analysis problems. So its programming model lends itself well to distributing it throughout multiple computers on a large cluster. And that's what horizontal scaling means. Vertical scaling would be if you just kept adding more and more resources to one computer. So if you have a really big data analysis job and one computer can't cut it, one solution would be to keep throwing more and more processors and memory and other resources on top of that computer to make it faster and more efficient. And that's what vertical scaling is. But there's an upper bound to that. You can only beef up one computer so much. So horizontal scaling has the sort of an unlimited upward potential there. You can add as many computers as you want to a cluster, you know, hundreds, thousands, whatever it takes, the sky's pretty much the limit. And although there's some overhead to getting all those computers to communicate with each other, it scales much more widely than vertical scaling would. So MapReduce offers a programming model for distributing the processing of a large data set amongst multiple computers. At its simplest, MapReduce just consists of a mapper and a reducer. So a mapper is just a function that parses source data and maps values to unique keys. So it just extracts the information you care about from your data set and organizes it for you. And various parts of your data may go to different mappers, which can process them all in parallel on different computers. And then a reducer function just processes all of the values for a given key. So after the mapper is done, all of the values for each key get sent to a reducer that then processes all the information for that key. And it'll make more sense when we look at, a, at an example later on, but at a high level, that's all MapReduce is. It's a mapper that extracts the information you care about and a reducer that does some function on all of the values for a given key that you care about. So what's Hadoop? How does it fit together with MapReduce? Well, Hadoop is the system that runs MapReduce, so it's what actually manages the cluster for you. It makes sure that all of your data is distributed and where it needs to be, that every computer can get access the data that it needs, and it also figures out you know, where to send what in your cluster. MapReduce is just one application that can run on top of Hadoop, but you know it's the one we're going to focus on here. Hadoop offers something called HDFS, that's the Hadoop Distributed File System, and that's its mechanism for sharing files across the cluster in a reliable manner. So if you have a big data set, all of your nodes in your computer, on your computing cluster need to be able to access that data somehow, and they need to write the results someplace as well, and that's where HDFS comes in. It also manages all the communication between computers, so through a technology called YARN, Hadoop can keep track of what information is where, what should be being used for what processor, and just you know figuring out what information goes to which computer on your cluster and how those computers communicate with each other to coordinate their results. The, the other thing Hadoop gives you is fault tolerance. So not only does Hadoop give you horizontal scaling and a way to add more and more computers to a problem to just you know throw more and more hardware at it, but it also gives you fault tolerance. So the more computers you add into a cluster, the more likely one of them is going to fail in the middle of your job, right? So, you know, maybe someone's gonna kick out the power plug, maybe it will have a hard drive failure, maybe it will have a memory failure, who knows? But the more computers you get in one place, the more likely one of them will fail for whatever reason. So Hadoop can actually duplicate your data across multiple machines in your cluster. And that way, if one of your computers goes down, it can know which computer to go to instead to retrieve a backup copy and just keep on marching along like nothing happened. So that's a very important thing when you're running a very large job on a compute cluster. If one of those machines fails for some reason, and when you're dealing with you know virtual machines and whatnot, that can be a pretty common thing to happen. You wanna make sure it can deal with that gracefully and you don't wake up in the morning to a failed job that needs to be run again. So who's using this stuff? Well, Google is the one who invented MapReduce and originally it was used for PageRank and for their web crawler and for creating inverse search indices, which is a, you know, sort of a data mining term there, but 
As the inventors of MapReduce and the purveyors of some of the biggest data there is, I mean, they are basically keeping track of the entire internet, as well as everyone using it, if you think about it. That's some pretty big data. And uh, they, they created MapReduce out of necessity, and as the inventors, they've been using it for some creative stuff. Yahoo has also been instrumental in contributing back to the Hadoop community, and they claim to be running over 100,000 CPUs in a Hadoop cluster for ad research and search applications eBay also using Hadoop for research and search optimization work. Lots of items on eBay and lots of people selling them. Amazon, obviously, you know, tens if not hundreds of millions of items in their catalog and hundreds of millions of customers that they need to manage. And they are using Hadoop for their product search indices and for various analytical jobs and log analysis and things like that. Finally, Facebook also very active in the Hadoop community. They've contributed back a technology they call Hive that we'll talk about more. They claim to have the biggest Hadoop cluster out there, and they're using it for things like reporting, analytics, and also for machine learning. There's a lot of things you can do with MapReduce that are, uh, even though MapReduce itself is a very simple algorithm, a very simple system, you can do some pretty complicated tasks using MapReduce if you're a little bit creative and you chain different MapReduce jobs together. So it can even be used for things as complicated as machine learning. And if you think about how many people subscribe to Facebook and how much information they're posting on a daily basis, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that they need something like Hadoop. And it's not just for big web companies in Silicon Valley either. So it's used in the field of genomics for DNA analysis, for finance, for analyzing stock trading and whatnot. I mean, obviously a big employment avenue for data scientists is in the finance sector, especially if you're on the East Coast. It's been used in politics. It was used to manage the Obama campaign and all the contributors and people that, uh, that backed that campaign. Healthcare for managing large amounts of health records. Energy for things like analyzing uh, geographical data for finding the best place to drill for oil and things like that. Big travel websites can use it to manage you know, flight schedules and what routes to take and things of that nature. Logistics, uh, shipping companies can use Hadoop to figure out how to route their packages most effectively. And telecommunications also can use Hadoop and, and does use Hadoop for managing things like its log information and keeping track of all of its subscribers and who's calling who and all of their billing information and, and whatnot. So all, any company that has a big data is a big company and they're also gonna have big jobs to offer because analyzing this data is a very specialized skill and one that pays well. So recently the website careercast.com came out with the top 10 highest paying jobs in the United States for 2015. Nestled in between orthodontist and air traffic controller at number eight was data scientist, making an annual median wage of $124,150. So it's a, you know, not a bad salary. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot more to being a data scientist than just understanding MapReduce and Hadoop, but that is a big part of it. You definitely need to understand distributed computing and how to manage large data sets before you can call yourself a data scientist. Um, the other half of the puzzle is understanding statistics and machine learning and techniques like that, but... Um, you know, this is, a, this is a good chunk of the problem here, just understanding how to manage and wrangle data in the first place, and that's what we're going to talk about some more. All right, so you can see big data, all the hype isn't for nothing. There are some real exciting applications of this technology, and it opens up possibilities that weren't around before. So continue on with me, and we'll learn about how it works.